And this is a Fox News alert. A major upset in the Virginia GOP primary. Tea Party back candidate Dave Bratt has defeated House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. Joining me now with analysis, nationally syndicated radio talk show host. I labeled him the great one, Mark Levin. Uh, Mark, you were probably the most prominent public figure supporting this guy. He was on your show last night. He was on your show a number of times before. We had him on for a good 15 minutes tonight. Gave very, very coherent solutions to the problems this country is facing. Talks about a lot of things you talk about, the Constitution. What is your analysis? What happened here tonight? Why did he win? First of all, you just heard him for 15 minutes. Does he sound like a kook to you? I mean, the problem is that every conservative candidate, you can call Tea Party candidate, whatever you want, is dismissed. I hate to say it, it's dismissed by one or two or three of your prominent commentators from time to time because they're pushing uh, different candidates and so forth. Um, I think what's happening is people are sick and tired of centralized government and the impact it has on their life, whether it's Obamacare, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce and the AFL-CIO pushing amnesty, and it is amnesty. Until we secure the border, it's amnesty. Uh, they're tired of being uh, uh, pushed around and bullied by Mitch McConnell and others who rub their noses in it, we're going to crush you. When he says Tea Party, the Tea Party's bigger than any particular Tea Party group. The Tea Party is Americans who rose up and gave John Boehner the speakership. And then to be talked to that way, you know, the analysis has been so wrong the last several months. I looked at Boehner's numbers. Boehner got 69% in the Republican primary against a 30-year-old adjunct professor at $100,000. That is a disastrous showing for a man who's been there 24 years. I look at McConnell. The Republican leader in the Senate has been elected, what, five, six times? He got 60% against a citizen candidate who's never run for office before. I look at Cornyn in Texas. He ran against four or five uh, candidates who were not well-known and underfunded. He got 59%. And folks here keep bringing up Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham had six opponents who were fighting with each other. They couldn't get behind a single candidate. If he had had a guy like Bratt or McDaniels or somebody else, he would have had a tougher night. And look at Mississippi. You have a Republican who's been there forever, Thad Cochran. And Co there's no reason to back Cochran. His days are over. Everybody knows it. He was beaten in the Republican primary by McDaniel. Well, and what's happening? Haley Barber and all these other lobbyists are going after him. You look at this, and the Republican Party leadership better wake up. People want a new Republican Party with fresh faces, with vigorous leadership, and they're not getting it, and they want it because the Republican Party is the only organization that can challenge Obama and Schumer and all the others and start to defeat them. You know, Mark, you served in the Reagan administration. You were Ed Meese's chief of staff. Um, and by the way, Britt Hume, I thought, gave a very good analysis tonight about how somebody like yourself, you know, getting behind a candidate, as you did in this case, can have a powerful impact. And I think in this race it probably did. But Reagan, people forget, challenged the sitting president in 76, um, nearly beat that sitting president. Now he's viewed, you know, everyone loves Ronald Reagan at this point, but at the time he was taking on the establishment. But he said, is it a third party we need? He said, no. It's a revitalized second party with no pale pastels but bold color differences. Do you see an analogy between this time and that time? I do. The people are yearning for a leader. They do not like the status quo, whether it's defended by Republicans or Democrats. They do not like the head of the Chamber of Commerce threatening people, telling them we're going to get amnesty or you're not going to have a nominee. They don't like Mitch McConnell getting up and saying we're going to crush you or Boehner making his jokes and, and so forth. And this isn't a joke to the American people. This is their future. And we see the country slipping away, at least the kind of country that we want. And why is it so hard for these guys to articulate our principles? They talk about Reagan, but they're Rockefeller Republicans. And what's ironic about this is the main opponent to Reagan in 1980 was George H.W. Bush. And now it's Jeb Bush, his son, who seems to be the main opponent to conservatives who are trying to rally behind a candidate in order to take this country back. And when I say take this country back, I mean from a president who is an imperial president who every day says he's going to act unilaterally and does across the board. We wake up in the morning, we don't know the next outrageous thing he's going to do. And Congress acts like it has no power. 
It has power. It's got the power of the purse. It's got the power to do other things, and it needs to do it. And they're afraid of Obama. They're afraid to take these steps. And you can see there is a percolating uh, anger and frustration among many of the American people, not just in the Republican Party. I'll tell you one other thing. You look at this election in 2012 of Obama. Obama should have been beaten by a halfway competent presidential candidate in the Republican Party who could articulate the principles of the party and expose Obama's fecklessness and weakness. We didn't do it. Millions of people stayed home. And who are those millions of people? Those were Reagan Democrats. Those are blue collar Democrats. Stop chasing ethnic groups. Stop chasing genitalia. Talk to the American people. Talk about liberty, opportunity. Explain to them that Obama's wrong and that we need to unleash the American people and unleash the economy. You know, you, you, you might be making news with that genitalia remark, but for those that don't know you don't know your sense of humor. But isn't it also, you talked about the country slipping away. In one of your books you said we're living in a post-constitutional America. Mark, 50 million Americans are out of work. You see what's happening with Obamacare. They can't even put up a website. You see what's happening with the VA, the IRS. And then look at, look at what our government is doing just today by basically flying people into Tucson, into Phoenix, illegal immigrants into this country, and Americans are saying secure the border. How important is that to all of this? How much impact did all of this have on this race? We have an Obama-made refugee problem, and it is growing on our southern border. It's like we're the third world. People are pouring over our border. It's the president's responsibility to security. He went all the way to the Supreme Court to fight Arizona and Texas and Georgia and South Carolina and other states and said, no, I'm in charge of immigration. I'm in charge of it. And what has he done? He's unleashed criminals into this country. He won't secure the border. This is what the people want. They want that border secure. They want that E-Verify enforced. And then we'll talk about the other subjects. Since 1986, the American people have been told that border is going to be secure. And now we have people been. coming across here. We don't know who they are. They won't stop. And we can't control right. it. Mark, we've got to run uh, the great one each, after, each afternoon and evening. Uh, just check your radio dial. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it.